In this video, we're going to look at a problem with integrals, and I'm going to do it through this example, the integral of 1 over x to the 4 between minus 1 and 1. Now, if we go through the algebraic process that we're used to, we can rewrite that as x to the minus 4 dx. I'm evaluating between minus 1 and 1. So I can add 1 to the power, so x to the minus 3, divide by the new power. So let's tidy that up. So we can write that as minus one third of x to the minus three, the value between minus one and one. Right, let's open up a couple of brackets, open up the first bracket, substitute in one, we're gonna get minus one third. Take away, substitute in minus one. So we've got minus one to the minus three, which is just minus one. So we're gonna get positive one third. So we've got minus one third, take away one third, which is minus two thirds. Okay. However, there is a problem. And the problem is uh, with the curve itself. Because if I were to draw y equals 1 over x to the 4, it looks like this. There's minus 1. There's 1. And what I'm actually doing here is I am integrating over an asymptote. So the y-axis is an asymptote. This is going on and on and on forever, um, up to infinity. And that obviously causes a problem. And so although I've got a result of minus 2 thirds, which we can clearly see can't be right because it's, below, it's above the x-axis and should, if anything, be positive. Um, the other problem is that asymptote, and actually this integral does not converge. Okay, and it does. There is no single value for this integral. Okay, so effectively, it's like saying that the error is infinite. However. What is interesting about these curves is that although integrating that um, gives you an infinite result, if instead um, you were looking at integrating this not between minus 1 and 1, but let's say integrating it between 1 and infinity, well, that's different, OK? It might seem that you're thinking, well, why should that have a result? And the first one doesn't. So integrating over that asymptote didn't work. But if I integrate this, and it goes on and on and on forever, why should that have a result when the other doesn't? How could what appears to have be an infinite area have a finite value? Well, what you can do is you can look at this as a limit. Okay, And you can look at the limit as saying, well, I'm going to let a tend to infinity and integrate 1 over x to the 4 between 1 and a. So, uh, adding 1 to the power divided by new power gets me x to the minus 3 over minus 3, so minus 1 third x to the minus 3, evaluated, evaluated between 1 and a. So we've got the limit as a tends to infinity of, right, opening up the first bracket, we'll have minus 1 third of a to the minus 3. Substituting in 1, we're going to get just minus 1 third. So... Tidying, we're going to have one third, so positive one third, take away, and this is the same as minus one third times one over a cubed. So that's minus one over three a cubed. Now, as a tends to infinity, this fraction will get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller because the denominator is getting ever larger, leaving me with one third take away something that's getting very, very small. And so actually this error is one third. And that is right. That error has is exactly one third. 
Okay? So not only do we have the interesting behavior that we cannot integrate over an asymptote, but you are able to integrate uh, to infinity and work out um, an area like that. Okay? Now, you can deal with integrating between 0 and 1. Okay? So, if, for example, we were going to look at the area between 0 and 1, what you would have to do is you'd have to think of this in a very similar way. Okay, so let's deal with that. Okay, to determine if this exists, we're going to say, actually, we're going to let A tend to 0, okay, of this x to the minus 4 dx. And so we would have... Um, I should know this by now, shouldn't I? So minus one third x to the minus three. Okay. Um, a one that should have a limit at the front. So limit as a tends to zero. Okay. So now substitute in um, the one. I'm going to get minus one third. Take away substituting in the a uh, minus. 1 third times a to the minus 3, so minus 1 over 3a cubed, like that. And so now I've got the limit as a tends to 0 of minus 1 third plus 1 over 3a cubed. And what's going to cause a problem is that as a tends to 0, this denominator gets closer and closer and closer to 0 which means this fraction gets larger and larger and larger and larger. And so this limit diverges. So in this case, right, that would be the method. And sometimes you can get finite values for these types of integrals. They are called, they are other examples of indefinite integrals. They're still called indefinite, even though they've got limits on them. Okay. Um, but you can use that method to determine what would appear to be infinite errors. In this case, it diverges, but there are going to be other examples out there where it converges. And we saw one where we could go from 1 to infinity and it converges. So there's a lot of interesting behavior just a little bit further out there.